This podcast is brought to you by Reimagine Radio, the online radio station that aims to give you information on disability and music. My name is Graham Wyman, and I'm the program coordinator with the Vancouver Adapted Music Society. Today, I'm joined by Greg 77 Spokes Levine and Dave Symington. Gentlemen, thank you for being here today, and how are you doing? Uh, good, thanks. Thanks for having me. Oh, Graham. of course. Dave. Doing well, thanks. That's good. That's good. So, uh, starting off with you, Greg, um, just getting a little bit of your history and backstory, what turned you onto music, and how old were you when you first started singing? I was probably about 15 okay. years old in high school. Yeah. And I started with some friends. We just would start freestyling. We listened to a lot of rap music back then okay. and just freestyled for fun, like off the top of our head. And we would actually record it on a little ghetto blaster with a plastic mic corded, okay. plugged right into it. Yeah, and we would just record our voices and listen on the tape deck, right. on cassette, yeah. and play it back. And it was just for fun. We were freestyling and uh, doing, you know, drinking, smoking, having fun like teenagers do. Mm -hmm. And um, it was it was a lot of fun. And then we started to write songs mm -hmm. and got a little more serious about it. So I think why I got into it was just to kind of do the thing that my friends were doing and we, we just got into it together and we really loved the hip hop music we listened to. So, okay. Who were some of your inspirations back then? Um, back then that was a while back, but I've always liked like common and the roots mm -hmm. and, um, lots of, I like outcast. I love, I always loved outcast yeah. back in the day. Gotcha. Gotcha. And so, I mean, you kind of answered this a bit, but were you instantly invested in singing rap or did that kind of curate after a while or was that kind of your passion genre? I think it was pretty, pretty much from the beginning. Okay. It was rapping that we were doing. And then like once in a while, I would sing a little bit as part of it. And mm -hmm. even till this day, that's basically, basically what I do is a little bit of singing once in a while, but I don't really call myself a singer. It's mostly rapping. Okay. And um, when did you begin to write your own lyrics and produce your own music? With um, your friends, I guess, or before, like during that time or after? Yeah, and I, I, I started writing probably when I was 15, 16, and then just continue doing it even up till now and I did try a bit of producing mm -hmm. probably in the early 2000s okay but I I don't actually produce now I'm not I don't make the beats I don't okay. do the production side but I do mostly just the vocals right right yeah um and Can I just ask I'm just kind of curious how of like what were you writing lyrically back when you started? What did you have certain themes, and how did that transition in terms of the content of your lyrics? Okay, yeah. So, I think it was a lot different back then. It it was like mostly about smoking weed <laughs> and drinking, yeah, and like just those things that I was into back then, and uh, just about getting a gram getting a dime bag, um, just putting $5 on it. Like there was a song, I got five on it by the Loonies, which we, we loved back then. Okay. And it just means I got $5 on the sack of weed and you put it pitch in together to get a bag. And we right. would just talk about all that stuff and like drinking and partying on the weekends. And it, it was, it was mostly about that and I guess a little bit about girls too. Yeah. Oh, and, so, and now it's different now. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm just curious at what point that transition happened for you where maybe the drinking and the girls and the drugs weren't a big deal anymore. So you kind of, you were obviously still in the music. So, you know, what, 
where what happened during that transition um i i it was pretty gradual it was pretty gradual like um in throughout the early to late 2000s like 2005 2006 i started uh smoking less and i quit smoking actually quit smoking cigarettes and i um stopped started smoking less weed and um, still was drinking and I do drink occasionally now but it was more like the weed just kind of stopped and I also got diagnosed with a mental illness uh, back then which was part of the reason I stopped smoking weed because it was had a negative impact on my mental health right okay was that difficult to quit for you I mean because it's you know, there's a lot of identity wrapped up, and I know that from my teen years. But to change, you know, because you basically have to find a new avenue, uh, group of friends, more or less, to make it yeah. easier. Yeah, it was uh, really hard. It was really hard to quit smoking weed, and like I tried so many times over the years, and I was never able to. And then finally, with the the uh, bipolar diagnosis. I just had to stop. I didn't have a choice. And then, um, yeah, my friends basically just stopped. I, I was cut off from my friends mm -hmm. for multiple reasons, also due to mental health and uh, and different things I was going through at that time. So I had to find new friends and even just finding friends like you two. I've done over the years and like, and Dave, you're, you've been a great friend and I, and I just appreciate having friends once in a while that I can see. But for the most part now, I don't really have a core group of friends like I did back then. It's kind of different because it's just my wife and I day in and day out. And we're kind of best friends now. So it's just different. Yeah. You could ask for worse problems. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, this year has been definitely, aside from the regular stuff, it's been you know, a difficult year that way to be you know, with your friends and it changes the quality of friendships. And sometimes it means you get different friends and you figure out what your priorities are in a different way, I guess. That's exactly right, I'd say. So anyway, thanks for saying that because I've always enjoyed our time together. And some of the time in the studio we've had are some of the best times I've had, so. Oh, sweet. It's because you're Thank always you. so well prepared and you're so <laughs> nice. Oh. You're so spot on all the time that, like, for me, it was just, you know, it was it wasn't work. It was just just press record, <laughs> pretty much. It's awesome. You know, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. No, and that's a skill too. I mean, I always say treat the recording process like you would your instrument, right? You don't mm -hmm. go on stage unless you're prepared. So now that's a big skill to have. Yeah yeah so yeah. um greg when you formed reverse priorities um or sorry when did you form reverse priorities and how did that come about was that kind of your group of friends at 15 yeah that was a group of friends a few of us and then one of my friend's older brothers okay. one of his his older brother was in our group too and one of his friends so it was us and I didn't really form it per se myself we just naturally kind of came together like that okay. and then and that was I guess around two uh no 1998 probably or by the time it like by the time it officially formed was 1998 1999 and then in the early 2000s we were doing a lot of shows okay and, and in that group, um, were some of the other, like, how did you guys produce the music back then? Um, we, we had a studio um, with a booth, okay. like, a, yeah, in the basement of basically my best friend back then and his older brother were in the group Reverse Priorities, and they had in their parents' home in Coquitlam, they had a basement where they, we would go most of the time. Okay. And, and we just would hang out there and do our thing. And they had a booth with like eggshell 
insulation right. around a uh, microphone stand and uh, like he had his equipment he had Korg keyboard probably a Korg I think it was I can't remember yeah. but again I'm ne I've never been into the production too much at all okay. I don't really even know much when it comes to musical notes and stuff I'll be honest I just I'm a poet right. I write songs I write lyrics I express myself through words mm -hmm. and then I like to lay vocal tracks and just rapping, yeah. Yeah. Now, is is there a particular moment or standout moment from that group that you know you remember fondly? Um, yeah, there is actually a moment that comes to mind, and it might sound funny. We the moment is a photo shoot. Okay. That we had, yeah, it was a photo shoot that we had probably in like. 2002 or 2003 mm -hmm. and it was totally professional and at that time we were doing a lot of shows we were doing everything that groups should be doing to make it to where they want to be successfully mm -hmm. and we thought we were about to blow and just like have our big break right. so we booked this photo shoot and it was um, really professional in a warehouse with all the lighting and we had change, changes of outfits, changes of backdrops, right. and like all these cameras set up, and it was really cool. It was a good day. We had a lot of good photos, and I still have a lot of those photos on my hard drive. Okay. And I actually, I still use some of those photos that were of me, like in some of my social media to this day. Okay. Because they were such good photos, and and I know it's kind of funny to not to to uh, not um, say like a certain time on stage that stood out for me, but it was just, I just remember that photo shoot. Well, the excitement reason. probably, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. How was the, uh, like, how was the band, they, so you, was it, were there more, was it, were there more people rapping than you? And did you actually have a backing band or did you play along, sing along the tracks or? How did you do, how, how was it structured? Like when you did live shows? For live shows. Yeah, for live shows, we had just the four of us standing on stage rapping to backing tracks. So we would have, it wouldn't be live band at all. We never had a live band. I've never, I haven't had too much experience with live band, but um, we would just, the four of us be moving around. So we would have to coordinate and we would rehearse in uh, one of one of the guys in the group had had a shop in Richmond, an auto body shop. And we would go upstairs in that auto body shop. There was a big floor upstairs, a space where we could rehearse. So okay. we would rehearse like multiple days a week because we had shows every weekend and we were in like battle of the bands and things like that, which is not common for a hip hop group we were up against rock bands and stuff. It was right. kind of strange, but yeah. So we, we, we would coordinate where we cross the stage back and forth from each other. Like, like my friend would go in this corner of the stage and then I would go on the opposite side. And then at this point in the song, approximately, not exactly, but approximately we would, you know, cross over and try to go make sure we don't cross our mic wires. Cause for a long time we didn't have cordless mics. Right. We had cords and it was crazy getting the cords caught. <laughs> <laughs> right. I remember those days. Yeah. And so you yeah. were you were on this uh, trajectory. It appeared that you were going to be perhaps have a big break. What what actually happened there? Um, we just kind of tried. Uh, we had one album that we put everything into, basically the like there was an album first that was kind of homemade and it was our first uh try and then we a couple years later after doing all this stuff we put out like a real album quote unquote and that one got a little bit of notice around the community i guess in vancouver but um we just never really hit it off we didn't really end up going anywhere and i guess after that we just kind of decided to slow it down a bit and then I went in a different direction and 
so did they. A couple of the other guys formed another group um, even a, couple, a few years later, and they got even more notice as their own group. They were touring with, like, Swollen Members and huh. Kip, Kiprios and all those guys. They they, they uh, made a lot of connections. Mm. What kind of um, preempted the, you know, you wanting to go and do your solo career? Um, it was just, na- uh, I mean, it was just natural. We kind of broke up as a group. We just stopped doing it together. And then I always... Even back in 1999, like when we were first starting as a group, I always had my own drive to make my own songs, my solo songs. I even made a song called Run For Your Life back then, and it was my first solo song. And so even while I was in the group, I always had the kind of urge to be solo. And I really think I am a solo artist. I've always been that way. Right. Yeah, I think it's the right move. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, hope so. Well, you can you can be you know completely honest with your you know your words, mm-hmm. and if I mean it's really true, it's all your decision about what you're going to say, right? And I think oh, yeah, you know, so you always seem to speak from the heart and the soul and and the mind, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Speak your truth. Totally, totally yeah. true. And another thing about it is you can choose your own beat. Like I noticed that I'm able to, back then in the group, I wasn't really able to choose the beats too much. It was more like a group decision, but now I can pick and choose what I want and what I want to do to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you have very good, very good taste, I guess, when it comes to that. I always find you seem to get the right, I don't know what your selection process is, like if you were, say, for for no data, just to right. pick one, and yeah. like, how did you have a few different beats you were considering, and then you just land on one and go, no, that's it for sure. How does that work? Yeah. So for no for no data, I I did um, try that chorus on a few different beats, and that's usually what I do. So I'll write a chorus or I'll write some verses, and I'll try it on different beats and try it over and over and record it on my iPhone and see which one sounds good, play it back. And that the one the beat that ended up that I did end up choosing for no data, I love that beat so much. And it's so yeah. upbeat. It's such a good positive beat, so it made sense for those lyrics. Mm-hmm. And where do you get the beats? Is it a do you have one source or are there multiple places you can go and get samples and then if you decide you want it then you pay somebody for it I guess or yeah you can do that you you a lot of people do that online you can choose whatever beat maker you want or samples you like but I I don't really do it that way I have one guy in Ontario and he doesn't want to get his name out there so I can't say his name but I've been working with them for many years, like um, more than a decade. Oh, wow. And uh, this guy has done a lot of the beats for me. And so he does like 50 beats. He'll send them over and say, just pick and choose whatever you want to use. So it's like, and and I like his style. I like the beats Mm -hmm. he makes. They're, they're, They're all different. They're totally different genres. And he used to be in a, a rock band himself. So he's not necessarily all hip hop. Like he, he has a lot of different influences. But now that I'm mentioning that, I should also mention that I recently hooked up with another uh, a girl who lives in Bahrain in the Middle East, and she she made a beat and played the guitar on a song, and I think it's coming up soon called Mum's Song, and um, so I am kind of trying to branch out and try different people, different instrumental sources. Okay. That's cool. How do you meet somebody in Bahrain? Is it just by uh, chance or how? Well, she, uh, no, it was because she's on the the chat group on Facebook for Nemaline Myopathy, which is the type of muscular dystrophy that we both have. Oh. So 
Oh, okay. So, so we met through our disability um, similarities, and yeah, she's super nice. She's so cool, and we we're actually becoming good friends. We're probably gonna do more socks too. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, that's great. So it won't just be you and your wife at home being best friends. You'll have <laughs> yeah. Now there's yeah. someone yeah. else to add. That's good. All right. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> You're branching out. Yeah. 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 So no, that's cool because it's. I think it's. I know we've talked before, but I've never really fully understood how, how that the beat market sort of works in that sense. You know, so it's interesting to hear the, you know, how you go about it, because you're you are collaborating and it's in a way, but you make the final choice. So, yeah, yeah, that's neat. And so one one thing I, I do want to touch on, Greg, is, you know, I, I read a quote somewhere, I think that you wrote that you said that, you know, once reverse priorities parted ways, you felt that your lyrics and unique style kept evolving. Um, and I'm sure it's been, been doing that to today. How, how do you feel, or maybe you can tell our listeners, you know, how you feel that happened? Um. I think that was uh, like we've been talking about with the uh, past experience, like when we first started out and reverse priorities was forming just with the lifestyle change right. to what it is now, mm -hmm. because even now I'm just, I'm not drinking very often and not partying, I guess. It also comes with age yeah. for probably a lot of people, mm -hmm. but um, I think it's basically now what I started writing more about in the recent years is faith, hope, and love. Mm -hmm. So when I say those three, I mean like faith in a higher power and and like hope in like making it through the storm because we all have these, these different things we're going through and these tough times that we're in and the prison that we lock ourselves into mentally or these things we get caught up on and we need to break free. We need to break free and find hope and like, and then love it's just like it's relationships like with my wife with family with friends and those are kind of the topics of what i write about now mm -hmm. now speaking about a song you're writing about and you talked about this um earlier today but um to lead us out of our first segment um why don't you tell us a little bit about mum song i mean you mentioned the new collaborator that you're working with but how did that come about yeah, so for Mum's song, we just decided um, her name is Zaina Arikat. So Zaina from Bahrain in the Middle East, uh, we met on the Nemeline Myopathy chat group, and she, we were, were thinking about what type of song to do, and she sent me a couple samples of like guitar riffs, mm -hmm. and and I heard a few of them, and I was like, oh, they were actually all really good, and I said, what about this one? And then she was like, do you want me to speed it up or slow it down? And I was like, oh, let's try speeding it up. Or And then we decided to slow it down. But anyway, um, it was a really collabor collaborative process. Mm -hmm. And she made the beat, the drums. And throughout the process for her making that beat and playing that guitar, mm -hmm. she did it over and over until it was perfect. And she kept on sending it to me saying, how does it sound? And then when I was, and then after we, we had the beat, um, I was writing to it and saying, this is what I've written so far, this is it. And then mm -hmm. at some point I changed it and said, this is the new. So we were really collaborating and we decided to write a song for our moms, um, okay. just how they're basically superheroes and they, they give all their love, they give all their everything to us for our whole lives and... They're really special. Mothers are one of a kind. You only get one. Yeah. So we called it Mum's Song, and it's by myself, 77 Spokes, and Zaina Erikat. Well, no, that's great. And, well, thank you, gentlemen, for uh, joining me in part one. We'll have our next segment with Greg next Wednesday at 2 p.m., but to take us out today is Mum's Song. Thanks for joining me, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right, and to our listeners, stay safe and keep that music flowing. Yeah.
have won events See you get dollar in me staring back Start reflecting on all these blessings All these lessons A silhouette Cast down upon the fence See a cat taller than me staring back Start reflecting on all these questions All these lessons When I was lost, she brought me back with caution Taught me, even after I'd rather not be Listening, caught myself wishing she'd disappear But when she gone, I'll be wishing that she was here Said pray, take meds, go to bed Wake up early, go to work Make enough bread to save my mother The best teacher I ever had School could never teach me that I'm gonna take you on a journey To other side of learning I'm gonna take you on a journey To other side of learning I'm gonna take you on a journey to the other side of learning. I'm gonna take you on a journey. A silhouette cast down upon the fence. See a cat taller than me staring back. Start reflecting on all these blessings. All these lessons, a silhouette Got to escape, escape from the mental prison that we make These days, like we can't communicate But mother, we relate like no other You take a bad situation and cover it with grace Hardened hearts on the grind, on the granite As we fight through this life Never take for granted the light you show Taught me about life and gave me a hope I'm gonna take you on a journey to other side of learning. I'm gonna take you on a journey to other side of learning. I'm gonna take you on a journey to other side of learning. I'm gonna take you on a journey. Side of learning. I'm gonna take you on a journey.